Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Shaustool and this is another tutorial for modding space engineers. In this episode we're actually going to be creating our icon for our model that is going to go into the block menu and that will pretty much wrap up a lot of the information that we actually need to create to actually deal with our block in the game. So what we're going to do is open up Blender and here we can see I got the model and I'm on layer 1. Now I did a previous video about UV mapping. I suggest you go give it a look-see and you'll see why in a few minutes as to why you want to actually properly UV map something as opposed to using the smart UV map. Alright so here we have our block and I'm going to add this for you. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to add a camera. We're going to add a couple lights or at least one and then we're going to check our render settings to make sure that we are prepared to actually take a picture of this. So without further ado let's go ahead and add a camera and I'm going to change a couple of values on this. I believe I want this to be at 160. Nope it looks like I want to go a lot further. I'll go to 200. I'm going to set this at 60. Now I'm going to press 0 on the numpad and I'm going to come over to the tab over here and look at the camera object data. And here we can see that the camera is a perspective at the moment but I want to change it to a orthographic. And here we can see that it is actually having some clipping and that's because our camera is actually contained within the block so we need to go ahead and move it out so I'm gonna pull back here and I'm gonna move the camera around a little bit alright so we can see our cameras about where I want it to be at but I want to move it over a little bit and center where I need it. So I'm going to shrink the camera size and get it so this square actually shows the whole bounding box. That way we can easily use the camera for other future one by one blocks. Alright that looks about good and now we're going to start sliding it over that way so we can actually get it in the center. Alright, we're going to go with that setting and move it down. And here we have our block in the center and I have it at an angle that I'm pretty happy with. Now if I just go ahead and go to the render settings and set the proper dimensions and everything that we require. I can see that I have it preset for 128 by 128 and that's what you require for an icon. You could go up to 256 by 256 and set this to 50 percent. However this is simple enough because it is a small image and we don't need it to be super crisp. But if you wanted to do it that way you can as long as the icon that you actually load into the game is 128 by 128. Alright so going down a little bit we can see an output tab. We want to make sure that this is a PNG with RGBA enabled because we need the alpha layer and we're just going to go with 16 bit color depth. A little bit further down we can see sampling. This is how many time, times it's going to re-render the same image to get rid of noise and you might be able to see some of it when I actually render this but for such a small image you usually don't get too much noise but we're, what we're going to do is click on sampling presets and go to final that way we are all using the same settings here you see that it's going to take 576 extra pictures to actually make up this now we're going to go down a little bit further to light paths <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and just set this to full global illumination 
and this is going to make sure that the model looks a little bit better illuminated when we actually start adding lights and then the last important piece is film and you want to make sure that this transparent checkbox is actually checked now what we can actually do is go ahead and press F12 and it should take an image as my fans go crazy as it tries to render the image and here you can see the sample count as it's going up and it took 576 extra renders to get this so you can kinda tell but here we have some noise and what the noise is is just light bouncing around to try to give us a better idea of what it might look in actuality as well as adding some more effects to it so it looks a bit more real now the blender render is a little bit more nice for this but the cycle renders works just fine and can provide a little bit more detail that you might actually want as well as only working with the materials that we actually put in the block you actually have to use the cycles renderer unless you want to go through and change all of your materials again just for the icon alright so here we can see that we actually need to add a light so I'm gonna go ahead and add a simple one so I'm going to go back to here I'm going to select our camera and snap the cursor there I'm going to shift A and add a sun I'm going to rotate it negative 45 I believe and then I'm gonna rotate it 90 let's go with negative 45 alright so that looks pretty good and I'm gonna press the render button again in here it's actually going to render with light and here you can actually see our problem that we've run into so the problem that you see here is that it's actually rendering the edges of the texture from our smart UV map so if we were to look at the UV map we might actually see where it corresponds with our issues and if I scroll up here we go so that black bit that we saw right about here might correspond to this and if we scroll around we can see that it's on several of the other sides of the sphere and we want to get rid of that so we can actually have a nice clean icon that, deta that detail that we had this blackness might not actually show up on the model in the game but for the purpose of the render it actually has and the reason for that is because everything has a different type of render engine technically and this one just so happened to pick up on those differences alright so what we're gonna do is open up my other blend file that I did the UV mapping on so if I press tab you can see the red lines here and those are the uh, seams being marked you can see that the blue lines are hidden if I click sharp they come back but I can leave them disabled if I select the whole thing and I look at it in the UV editor you can see it looks significantly different and it looks fairly cleaner in my opinion here we can we have one half of the sphere and the other half and then we have the base plate the arms and then the big square are the screens so it's a whole lot cleaner now I can take these this camera and this sun point and actually add it to my other one and to do that I'm going to save this and then save this one and go to append while oops and go into object mode and append I'm gonna look for the gyroscope which is right here 
object and then I'm going to add the camera and the sun and you can see that it's added them I went with append because I actually want to have them be editable if I want to change any of the settings for it now if I press 0 you can see it's in the same setting it kept the orthographic information and I can double check my render information that way I don't run into any issues so here we can see it's our GBA 16 bit the sampling is set to final and the light paths will set to full global and the film is set to transparent alright so now if we press F12 it's actually generating our image <coughs> now we have this dark spot here because it is part of the sun actually inter having to shine off of everything and we can see we have a dark spot down here and this and we can actually illuminate that better by adding another sun and we'll do that by just coming over to this one setting the cursor to selected and I'm just going to duplicate it and I'm going to rotate, uh, rotate it a little bit more I'm going to go to negative 60 I actually want it to be more over this way so I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll it until it's about where I want and I'm gonna go with negative 120 because that looks pretty good now I want to actually bring it up some so I'm going to pull it back further to about negative 70 and that should give me a fairly diverse amount of angle for light so I'm going to pull this up and here's our image presently if I press F12 again it's going to have additional light you can see a lot of the darkness went away got a little bit lighter around here and overall it looks pretty good now if you keep adding suns it's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter and you might want to change the value of those I like to have a primary sun and then any of the other ones will be a progressively lower and lower amount of light that they actually provide that way I get better shadowing so I'm gonna select my main sun and I'm going to go to the settings for it in the object data which looks like a little sun right there and I'm going to look for the strength alright so here we can see the strength and I want to edit this so it actually changes if it'll let me it is not for some reason it might have been because I appended it so what I'm going to do is duplicate this one and I believe that was about there that should be fine and here I can change the values again alright so I want my main sun to be about 0.8 and I want my secondary sun to be about 0.3 oops 0.3 and now when I press to render again it gets a little bit darker and it pretty much is where I want it to be at so I'm going to go ahead and use this image so I can move on with the tutorial for you guys. I'm going to go image down here at the bottom where the render actually is and I'm going to go save as image and what I like to do is actually go with the block name so we'll go back and I'm going to grab the block name here I'm going to copy it go to image and save as I'm going to hide this now and I'm going to paste it and I'm going to add icon at the end that way I know exactly what it's being used for and press save alright so that step is pretty much done however we need to convert it to a DDS so I'm going to open up my file explorer go to blender saves and models and it should be down here at the bottom and here we can see it's right there now if I right click it and open it with 
GIMP, I might have to start using paint.net or Krita, but for now GIMP is still working as intended. All right, so here we can see I have my image. Up here I can see that it is 128 by 128. And we can see that by this checkerboard background that it still has its alpha. And so what we're going to do is go to File, Export As, and we're going to go to where our mods are to locate them from here. You can go Local Disk C, Users, Shoustool, App Data, Roaming, and then Space Engineers, Mods, Gyroscope, Textures, GUI, Icons. And in here is where we're actually going to export our image. We're going to pull up this pull up menu instead of drop down menu. And we're going to look for DDS. We're going to go ahead and click that. And we're going to export. Oh, it looks like it didn't want to because I need to change the file name here. All right, try that again. All right, so we got our save as DDS prompt. Remember that GIMP only supports this BC3 DXT5. That is the only format that you should be using out of GIMP when you're saving your image. Do not use any others. I believe Photoshop is the only one that actually supports exporting as BC7, which is a DirectX 11 format that isn't usable on DirectX 9 to my understanding. So for icons, we're going to save it as a BC3. And as always, make sure you have generate MIP maps on, or you could run into some random error that Space Engineers likes throwing at you. Click OK. We're going to check our mod folder to make sure we have our new DDS. And here you can see it's right there. And that is pretty much everything. If you need to double check the name of your icon, go back to data, go to cube blocks, and I'll put that over there, and this over there. And we want to make sure our icon is actually named this and is in this path. So we'll go back to the main root folder. We're going to go to textures. So we're right here right now. We're going to go to GUI. And we're now here, our GUI graphics, uner, graphics user interface. And then we're going to go to icons. So we're in here. And we're going to select this file, which just so happens to be this one. Sometimes you can run into an issue <coughs> where you accidentally added something that you shouldn't have to your file name. So what I suggest doing is selecting the file name coming in here and pasting it. <coughs> Sorry about that. And we can see that I didn't change at all between this version and that version. So now we should have an icon in game that we can see for the purposes of finding it in the block menu. And that pretty much wraps up this tutorial. I'll catch you in the next one where we actually load up the game to see if we can actually place our block.